For a brief six-year period, Caesars Entertainment Las Vegas invited guests to enjoy a three-hour up-close and personal dining and entertainment experience where they would encounter the mysterious arts in a high-tech, elaborately themed, multi-chambered wonderland. This is Caesars Magical Empire. Caesars Palace Luxury Hotel opened on August 5th, 1966, making it the 16th hotel on the Las Vegas Boulevard. Caesars Palace was founded by Jay Sarno and Stanley Mullen, who sought to create an atmosphere in which everybody staying at the hotel would feel like Caesar during the Roman Empire. The palace was adorned with statues, columns, and Roman theming, including a 20-foot statue of Augustus Caesar near the entrance. The result was the gaudiest, weirdest, most elaborate, and most talked about resort that Vegas had ever seen. Caesars ushered in a new era of lavish casinos constructed after the late 1960s. Caesars Palace didn't shy away from spectacle. Frank Sinatra began performing at the palace in 1967. Then, on December 31st, 1967, Daredevil Evil Knievel attempted to jump over the water fountains, a 141-foot attempt and his longest to date. The undisputed king of motorcycle daredevils is Evil Knievel. His most memorable stunt gone bad was in 1967. Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. When he hit the takeoff ramp, the motorcycle unexpectedly decelerated, causing Knievel to come up short and land on a safety ramp supported by a van. The handlebars were ripped out of Knievel's hands and crowds watched in horror as he tumbled across the pavement and skidded into the dunes parking lot. A final attempt was made on April 14, 1989. Robbie Knievel, Evil's son, successfully completed what his father wasn't able to do. During the 70s and 80s, Caesars continued to ride high on prestige as it hosted headline entertainers and world-class sporting events. But by the late 1980s, the tides were changing and Caesars was about to face new competition. At the end of the 1980s, Las Vegas was ready to shed its old Vegas image. The Mirage opened in 1989, setting a new standard for Vegas resorts and spurring a trend towards highly themed, family-friendly entertainment. Other themed hotels, including Treasure Island and the Luxor, began construction and the management of Caesars began to explore ideas for elaborate features to compete with other modern Las Vegas developments. The Forum Shops at Caesars opened in 1992. It was the first high-end destination mall. At the time, other hotels scoffed at the idea of wasting valuable gaming floor space with shopping, but it proved to be the most profitable retail space in the entire nation. And home to 270 retailers, restaurants and bars, the Forum Shops paved the way for current establishments like Mandalay Place, Fashion Show Mall and the Tivoli Village. The Forum Shops also pioneered the painted sky ceiling effect, which dragged Las Vegas out of perpetual nighttime and into what would later be dubbed day life. Caesars also spared no expense on Roman theming and streetscaping. Welcoming guests to the mall was the animatronic Festival Fountain Show, a seven-minute sight and sound show featuring Bacchus, the Roman god of wine and agriculture, who holds a celebration filled with lighting effects, smoke, and lasers.
However, the Festival Fountain couldn't compare to a second animatronic show, The Fall of Atlantis, a free 11-minute spectacle which played out hourly. In The Fall of Atlantis, King Atlas had to decide which of his children would rule the throne. A special effects-laden feud of fire and water ensues before the family learns the ultimate lesson. Time of unveiling, Forum Shop's general manager Mark Bell was quoted as saying, No other indoor venue in Las Vegas has combined the special effects that are incorporated into the new Atlantis show. A review of the show quipped, If all shopping malls had special effects and fireballs, there'd be a lot fewer bored husbands in the world. If that wasn't enough, the mall also featured a 50,000-gallon saltwater aquarium that was home to 500 fish, including rays and sharks. The Caesars Forum shops impressed visitors and were an instant hit with their mix of shopping and entertainment. But Caesars had another trick up its sleeve that would outdo this all with both spectacle and grandeur. By 1996, Las Vegas was at the height of its family-friendly phase, with competitors offering eye-catching entertainment like volcanic eruptions and live pirate battles. Caesars Palace decided to build a new high-end attraction that would create a themed experience to outdo all others. When Caesars Magical Empire opened in June 1996, the multi-million dollar dining and entertainment complex offered guests a three-hour up-close-and-personal magic experience inside an elaborately themed multi-chambered wonderland. The 66,000 square foot immersive experience took 800 tons of steel and more than a year to construct at a cost of around $70 million. Attention was paid to the smallest details which earned it the prestigious Themed Entertainment Association's award for outstanding achievement. For the price of admission, guests were granted access to the Magical Empire, which included a combination of dining and entertainment. Caesar's Magical Empire, a journey of discovery, imagination, and wonder. Passing through the elegant celestial court, guests of Caesar enter the lavish Chamber of Destiny, where they are magically transported to a maze of catacombs 60 feet below the Earth. 
a sumptuous dining experience awaits, hosted by Caesar's own masters of illusion. As the explorers continue their journey through the mysterious catacombs, they will discover the magnificent Sanctum Secorum, a fantastic chamber where nothing is as it seems, where reality is in the hands of the wizards and in the eyes of the beholder. Ornate theaters, mysterious creatures, and dazzling displays of magic await around every corner. Caesar's Magical Empire. Visitors entered through the Celestial Court, the grand entrance to the Magical Empire, which was crafted from imported Italian marble and bedecked with winged griffins and other mystical figures and symbols. Guests were escorted by Roman centurions to the Chamber of Destiny and greeted by the imposing voice of Serenomus. They would then experience the sensory illusion that they were being lowered beneath the earth and into ancient catacombs. But in fact, it wasn't the guests that moved, but the walls themselves, raised by a giant electric winch while the floor was shaken by pneumatic actuators. Following the descent, guests would be led through dark catacombs which were a mixture of faux rockwork, classical architecture, magical effects, and real marble floors. And then into the dining hall of the gods. After being seated in a 24-seat themed dining chamber, guests were served a three-course meal with unlimited wine and entertained by a wizard who would perform magic, comedy, and songs in between courses. Guests would receive a golden medallion engraved with the phrase, Credus quote habis et habis. What you believe is real, is real. Following dinner, guests would be led out of the catacombs and emerge in the Sanctum Secura, a circular, 70-foot-high domed rotunda, and then treated to a dramatic display of dancing fire and lasers known as the Luminera. Guests were free to explore the central cavern, which was decorated with a 48-foot tall sage and a vessel of constantly pouring water that mysteriously floated in mid-air, and reproductions of artifacts from ancient Egypt and Iran, which were based on authentic relics. From the Sanctum Secura, guests could access two themed bars, one which offered a panoramic view through the fangs of a giant stone dragon. Inside, guests would be entertained by a miniature wizard who was no more than 10 inches tall. The other featured a ghost piano player who knew every song ever written.
If that weren't enough, guests would then experience not one, but two theater shows. The Secret Pagoda featured performances by talented magicians in a unique 75-seat theater. This theater-in-the-round seating was made specifically for the enjoyment of close-up magic. The 150-seat Sultan's Palace, hosted by the extremely funny and quick-witted Sultan, featured large-scale stage illusions. Noble guests, please join me on your next adventure, on your magical journey, right this way, please. After sampling all the wonders of the Magical Empire, guests would finally pass through the Infinity Chamber, returning at last to the real world. Well fed and thoroughly entertained, they had experienced a memorable spectacle and a great entertainment value. But after a short six-year stint, Caesar's Magical Empire disappeared as quickly as it began. From early 2000, rumors about the closure of Caesar's Magical Empire ran rampant, so it wasn't a surprise when it finally closed down on November 30th, 2002. Despite being a one-of-a-kind attraction, expectations of 2,400 guests a day proved to be wildly optimistic. Tickets were considered pricey for the time, starting at $70 plus for the dinner and show experience, and resulted in slower-than-expected sales. In the end, the attention to detail and sizable crew of 200 staff employed by the attraction proved to be its downfall. The 66,000 square feet of space used by the attraction proved to be too valuable, spelling the end of one of Las Vegas's most ambitious and impressive themed attractions. It was demolished to make way for the Pure Nightclub and the Coliseum Performance Venue. The 22,000 square foot stage was specially constructed for Celine Dion's show, A New Day, which ran from 2000 until 2007. The demand for family-friendly entertainment had peaked and Las Vegas began to look for adult alternatives. The Festival Fountain was finally retired in 2013 after running for years in poor condition and with limited effects. The Fall of Atlantis show also went on prolonged hiatus but was resurrected at the end of 2013 with 40 new state-of-the-art speakers and 14 video LED screens. Caesar's Magical Empire was truly a unique attraction, and those fortunate enough to experience it remember it fondly. Unfortunately, the Magical Empire didn't receive the attention or recognition it deserved, which led to it becoming another lost attraction. <laughs>